Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now talk about the types of leaves. So far we talked about the parts of a leaf, uh, the shapes of different shapes of lamina, different possible shapes of lamina and venation. Now we will see that what are the different types of leaves. Now again broadly leaves are divided into two types, simple leaves and compound leaves. So that is a very broad classification. Now they will again have their sub classification. So let us talk about each of these type of leaves in detail. So we will start our discussion with simple leaves. So let us see what are simple leaves. Simple has to be simple. So let us see what are they. Lamina is entire or when incised, the incisions do not touch the midrib. So again, you got a new term that is incised. So what do we mean by incised? Incised means something which is deeply cut or engraved into. I mean, if you cut something from somewhere, so we say that incisions have come into picture. So here, the in case of simple leaf, there are two options. Either the lamina of the leaf will be entire. So entire lamina means it would be something like this. Plain lamina. Or if it is incised, the incisions do not touch the midrib. So if this is the midrib, and let us suppose if this is the lamina, it is incised, maybe something like this. But these incisions do not touch the midrib. So here you can see the incision is up to here. It is not touching the midrib. So then these type of leaves are called simple leaves. Now you might ask what would happen if the incisions touch the midrib? So we will see that when we talk about compound leaves. So let us look at some of the examples or some of the variety of simple leaves. The screen is full of simple leaves now. So here you can see even though the shapes of the leaves are all different, but they are all categorized under simple leaves because their lamina are all entire. Even if it is not entire, even if it is incised, the incisions are not touching the midrib. Right? See here also the incisions are present. See it is incisions there. The incision is quite deep here. Now do you understand the difference between this type of incision and this type of incision? See the incision is very small here. But here the incision is little more, so it is little closer to the midrib. But here the incision is far away from the midrib. Right? So now imagine what would happen if it is more incised and this incision touches the midrib. We will see that when we talk about compound leaves. So this is simple leaves. The lamina either has to be entire or if it is incised, the incision should not touch the midrib. Then what is compound leaf? I think you got it now, looking at the picture which is shown. Now the moment your incisions will touch the midrib, it is no more a single leaf. It will actually have a lot of, it will actually, break, that entire leaf will actually break into a number of leaflets. So here the incisions of the lamina reach up to the midrib, breaking it into a number of leaflets. For example, in the previous slide, I showed you a picture like this with an incision like this, I mean, I'm roughly drawing it. So the let us suppose if this is my midrib. So the incision was still here. Now let us suppose if the incision goes still here, incision goes still here, what will happen? You will actually end up having three leaflets like this. You're getting the point what happens when the incisions start reaching towards the midrib. So the more the incisions reach towards the midrib, the more separate the different parts of the lamina becomes. And when it finally touches the midrib, your lamina actually breaks up into different leaflets. And that is what is happening in case of a compound leaf. Here each leaflet is given a term which is pinnet. So each leaflet is known as a pinnet. And the midrib is known as the rachis. So which is the midrib here? Here if you see this is your midrib now. So this midrib, this becomes the midrib which is known as rachis. And these are the leaflets. 
again there are sub classification of compound leaves compound leaves can be divided into two types pinnate compound leaf and palmate compound leaf so now that you know you are familiar with the terms pinnate and palmate i'm sure that you can guess something that what could be a pinnate compound leaf and what could be a palmate compound leaf anyways i would not ask you to put a lot of stress on your head we will right away discuss about these two types of compound leaves so here in this picture also you can see a pinnate compound leaf and a palmate compound leaf so in a pinnate compound leaf you actually have one strong midrib so that is what pinnate means pinnate always means one strong midrib palmate which is like a palm which is like the fingers of the palm means many strong ribs so here in the pinnate compound leaf you actually have one strong midrib or rachis and you have several leaflets along that in case of a palmate compound leaf here if you see it it looks like a palm it looks like the different fingers of a palm here you cannot prominently see the single midrib i mean or the rachis the rachis is not clearly visible here right you can see the leaflets but it is like all the leaflets start from the same point they look like the fingers of our palm so this is a palmate compound leaf and this is a pinnate compound leaf so let us discuss pinnate compound leaf in detail here leaflets are present on a common axis so again you have one single strong midrib this is how it is so this is the common axis or the strong midrib whatever you call it. so there are free and distinct leaflets so the leaflets are definitely distinct example would be rose so if you look at the leaves of a rose this is how they are arranged right so leaves this is how the leaflets are arranged example let us look at the palmate compound leaves now here the leaflets are attached to a common point at a common point like the fingers of a palm they resemble the fingers of a palm so we do not see the presence of a common axis here they are born on the tip of petiole so this is the petiole or the leaf stalk so at the tip of the petiole these compound leaves are born they resemble fingers of our palm example is chestnut so if you look at these chestnut leaves see this is the tip of the petiole and from there all the leaves are formed so this is about the palmate compound leaf now many people often have a question in their mind that how does a leaflet vary from a simple leaf because when i am talking about a compound leaf it looks to you as if there are many leaves arranged together so how does a leaflet vary from a simple leaf this is something very very important and this is something very very interesting as well because this question comes to many of your mind now when i talk about simple leaf it is an important organ of the plant for photosynthesis as you all know simple leaf is a leaf but leaflet is a leaf like part of a compound leaf so leaflet is not a leaf it is just a part of a leaf so it is part of a compound leaf it is just that it looks like a leaf but it is not a leaf simple leaf grows on the main plant branch or stem so obviously since it is a leaf so it will directly grow on the stem whereas a leaflet is not directly attached to the, attached to the main plant it is attached to the central midrib or the rachis right here if you see this one is a leaflet and this is a simple leaf so the simple leaf will be connected to the petiole and the petiole will be connected to the stem but here this leaflet is not directly connected to the stem all the leaflets are connected to the central axis in this case that is the tip of the petiole and then that is connected to the stem so each leaflet is not directly connected to the main plant axillary bud is present in case of simple leaf at the base of the leaf or at the axil of the leaf bud is present but here axillary bud is not present at the base of a leaflet an axillary bud can be present at the base of the compound leaf 
For example, there can be an axillary bud at this base because this is the base of the compound leaf. But an axillary bud cannot be present at the base of a single leaflet. Leaves of a plant can be aligned in different planes. Like if I talk about a plant, the different leaves can be in different planes. But if I talk about the leaflets of a single compound leaf, they all have to lie on one plane because I'm talking about the one particular compound leaf. So all the leaflets need to be arranged on the same plane. So these are some of the important differences between a leaflet and a simple leaf. So therefore never get confused with a simple leaf and a leaflet. Okay, so this was all about the types of leaves and I hope that it is clear to you. So now that we are aware of the leaf types as well, it is time. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.